Shampoo, a 1975 film, takes you on a roller coaster ride through the lives and loves of a Beverly Hills hairdresser navigating the turbulent waters of the late 1960s. Directed by Hal Ashby and written by Warren Beatty, the film skillfully weaves humor, shock, and sorrow into its narrative fabric. As you delve into the story, you'll encounter a series of funny, shocking, and sad revelations that keep you hooked till the end. What makes shampoo endure as a symbol of the industry? Is it the sharp wit, the social commentary, or the memorable performances? The answer might surprise you. Watch closely as the film unfolds its layers, and you'll find yourself pondering the enduring qualities that make it a timeless cinematic piece. Have you ever wondered about the most cherished memories or personal experiences others have had with this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear your unique perspective on this captivating journey through the tumultuous world of relationships and hairstyling. Stay tuned for more fascinating facts about shampoo. There's always more to discover about this classic gem. Shampoo, a 1975 film, has left an enduring impact on cinematic history due to its astute portrayal of societal norms and relationships. Directed by Hal Ashby, the movie navigates the complexities of interpersonal dynamics against the backdrop of the 1968 presidential election. The film's legacy is rooted in its satirical take on the sexual revolution, exploring the intersection of politics, love, and personal identity. Shampoo's relevance today lies in its timeless exploration of human behavior and the consequences of societal expectations. Its cutting critique of superficiality set against the politically charged environment resonates with contemporary audiences. The characters, played by a stellar cast including Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, and Goldie Hawn, embody the struggles and contradictions of the era, making them relatable figures for viewers across generations. The film's impact is further heightened by its groundbreaking approach to storytelling. Shampoo employs a narrative that transcends conventional genres, seamlessly blending comedy and drama. The unconventional narrative structure, coupled with Ashby's deft direction, contributes to the film's lasting influence on the cinematic landscape. Shampoo's enduring legacy extends to its influence on subsequent works, inspiring filmmakers to explore the intricacies of relationships and societal expectations. Its examination of the personal and political aspects of life has paved the way for a nuanced approach to storytelling that continues to captivate audiences. In conclusion, Shampoo's impact and legacy stem from its ability to transcend temporal boundaries, offering a compelling commentary on the human condition. The film's exploration of love, politics, and societal norms continues to resonate, making it a timeless and relevant piece of cinematic history. Shampoo, the 1975 film, boasts a creative team that significantly influenced its success. Directed by Hal Ashby, known for his adept storytelling in the realm of cinema, the film acquired a distinct touch. Warren Beatty, who also co-wrote the script, contributed substantially to the film's direction and narrative. The production was in the capable hands of Warren Beatty, Charles H. McGuire, and Harold Schneider. Their collaborative efforts brought forth a compelling portrayal of the 1970s Los Angeles social landscape. Beatty, with his multifaceted talents, played a pivotal role not only in production but also as the lead character, George Roundy. The casting process for Shampoo was noteworthy, with key actors delivering standout performances. Julie Christie portrayed the character of Jackie Sean, bringing her own charm to the role. Goldie Hawn, playing Jill, showcased her acting prowess, adding depth to the narrative. Lee Grant, who portrayed Felicia Karpf, earned an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, further highlighting the film's stellar cast. Interestingly, the casting choices underwent meticulous consideration. Beatty's involvement in both the behind-the-scenes and on-screen aspects created a unique synergy, with each actor chosen for their ability to embody the complexities of their characters. The chemistry between the cast members, especially in portraying the intricacies of relationships, added layers to the film. In conclusion, the collaboration of Hal Ashby, Warren Beatty, and the talented cast brought Shampoo to life. The film's success lies not only in its engaging storyline, but also in the skillful execution of its production and the stellar performances of the cast. Carrie Fisher faced an unexpected challenge during the production of the 1975 movie. In her autobiography, she revealed that due to her character's claim of never having her hair done, her real hair, considered too short, led to the use of a wig. 
The wig's lack of realism prompted the addition of a headscarf to address the issue. Meanwhile, the film witnessed the end of a long-time relationship between Warren Beatty and Julie Christie, who had been involved since 1967. Their final breakup occurred during the filming, yet they managed to maintain a friendship, collaborating again in another project. The movie draws inspiration from the 1675 restoration comedy The Country Wife by William Witcherly, where the protagonist feigns impotence to engage with married women. While Shampoo only loosely echoes this theme, the screenplay reportedly found inspiration in a 1969 Chichester Festival production. This connection is highlighted in a later edition of the play edited by James Ogden. These behind-the-scenes details offer intriguing insights into the making of the film, shedding light on the challenges faced by the cast and the sources of creative inspiration. It's a fascinating glimpse into the dynamic world of filmmaking during that era, showcasing the personal and professional aspects that shaped the narrative. Paul Simon, renowned for his musical prowess, composed the original score for the film. Interestingly, he later tied the knot with Carrie Fisher, who portrayed Lorna Karpf in the movie. Notably, Simon crafted a title song, Have a Good Time, for the film. However, Warren Beatty persuaded director Hal Ashby to opt for the Beach Boys, wouldn't it be nice, asserting that Simon's song portrayed Beatty's character as one-dimensional. Consequently, Simon featured the song on his Still Crazy After All These Years album, which garnered multiple Grammy Awards in 1975. In the realm of box office success, the film achieved significant milestones. A box office magazine article from June 2, 1975, highlighted it as one of the Columbia Pictures' biggest hits in history. The movie's impact resonated, making it a noteworthy achievement within the context of Columbia Pictures' extensive history. These insights provide a pragmatic view of the film's musical composition, the personal connection between Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, and its triumph at the box office. Such details offer a glimpse into the pragmatic aspects that shaped the film's trajectory, showcasing its notable features without delving into unnecessary complexities. It's a concise exploration into the multifaceted elements that contributed to the movie's success, emphasizing the intersection of music, relationships, and commercial acclaim during that era. Film director William Castle makes a cameo appearance in Shampoo, portraying Sid Roth, the man who propositions Jackie at the 1968 Republican Party function. This unexpected presence adds an interesting touch to the film, with a notable figure stepping into a brief role. In an effort to present a contemporary feel, the movie's poster showcases pictures of the three main actors Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, and Goldie Hawn as they appeared in 1975, rather than adopting the dated hairstyles of their characters set in 1968. This choice aimed to connect the audience directly with the actors as they were during the film's release, providing a modern touch to the promotional material. Despite reservations, Julie Christie, known for her feminist stance, took on the role of Jackie at the request of her lover at the time, Warren Beatty. Her portrayal adds an intriguing layer to the character, given the reported personal conflict she felt about the role. These behind-the-scenes details, sourced from a reputable website, shed light on the nuanced elements of the film, from unexpected cameos to promotional strategies and the personal dynamics among the cast. They offer a glimpse into the choices made during the production that influenced the final presentation, providing a more comprehensive understanding of its creation. Paul Simon, the renowned musician responsible for the film's original score, later became linked to Shampoo in a different way he married Carrie Fisher, one of the movie's key actors. The interplay between personal relationships and professional collaborations further enriches the tapestry of its history, showcasing the interconnected nature of the entertainment industry during that era. Carrie Fisher made her screen debut in the 1975 movie, donning a chemise Lacoste tennis tee. She faced a unique challenge during production, opting for a wig due to her character's claim of never having her hair done. The wig's lack of realism led to the addition of a headscarf. Interestingly, Fisher's character, Lorna Karpf, wears a chemise Lacoste tennis tee, showcasing a distinctive choice in costume design. In the film, the narrative delves into the world of the Hollywood elite stylist George, portrayed by Warren Beatty. He is rumored to be inspired by Jay Sebring, a stylist to the stars who tragically became one of the Manson family cult's victims in 1969, alongside Sharon Tate. This connection adds a somber layer to George's character, reflecting the real-life events surrounding Sebring and Tate during that tumultuous time. 
Renowned for his musical prowess, Paul Simon composed the film's original score, including the title song Have a Good Time. Despite this, director Hal Ashby chose the Beach Boys, wouldn't it be nice for the film? Notably, Simon later married Carrie Fisher, adding a personal connection to the movie. The movie's poster took a contemporary approach, featuring actors Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, and Goldie Hawn as they appeared in 1975, not adopting the dated hairstyles of their 1968 characters. Julie Christie, known for her feminist stance, accepted the role of Jackie at the request of Warren Beatty, adding an intriguing layer to her portrayal. In a cameo appearance, film director William Castle portrayed Sid Roth, bringing an unexpected touch to the film. The promotional strategy aimed to connect the audience directly with the actors as they were in 1975, providing a modern touch to the marketing. These details, sourced from a reputable website, offer a pragmatic view of the film, highlighting costume choices, real-life inspirations, and promotional strategies. The interplay of personal relationships, such as the marriage between Paul Simon and Carrie Fisher, adds depth to the narrative, underscoring the interconnected nature of the entertainment industry during that era.